Hi, I've had a failure on my um, solar analytics monitoring system. First thing I noticed is that I got an email report saying um, you haven't, we haven't received any data in a week. Just showing you my fuse panel again because everyone marvels at this wonder, <laughs> this ancient wonder. Um, even though it's not that ancient, it's like mid 80s Australian switchboard. Anyway, they don't make them like this anymore. So anyway, here's the solar analytics uh, system. And of course, I'll link in the video if you haven't seen it. It's my monitoring system that monitors both my Enphase system, your newer Enphase um, system. And so that's that one there. And uh, also my old Sunny Boy system as well, because I've got two different solar power systems. And this basically uh, combines the monitoring on uh, both of those. And it's died. Usually, and this is actually a three phase uh, one, but I've only got single phase here at the house. And it does, um, and the LEDs are out. The technical troubleshooting for this is. Hello, IT. Have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> okay, well, are you sure that it's plugged in? And I tried that, and I don't get any lights. So, um, yeah, I'm going to uh, I'm going to take that off and see what's what. In fact, I can show you on the back here. Yeah, that's the wire there that's powering it. So if I get the cover off, there's the mains input over there here, and I haven't physically touched anything, or well, nothing looks like it's it's come out or anything like that. And it's got a Phoenix block. There's the other side there with the uh, current transformers down in there, which I'm doing a weird um, thing with those. I'm actually uh, paralleling them up. I've done a video on that, but let's measure the voltages on there, see if we're actually getting mains input. Now, here's where one of these magnetic hanger things would have come in handy. Yes, I've got the original uh, red. Like, there's just nowhere to conveniently put the meter. I'd like to just hang it. Um, you know, I could have hung it on the side or something. And no, you can't get in there with a voltage detection stick. The one that I've got is just too sensitive. It just, you know, it can't discriminate. This whole box is just rah, spewing everything out and you can't detect an individual wire. So you've got to actually uh, touch probe it. Well, I just remembered that this actually does have a probe option. So, yep, there you go. Yep. And yeah, well, it turns out that it's actually wired into the light circuit. So I <laughs> didn't expect that. I thought it'd be, uh, you know, PowerPoint circuit. There's no voltage on it now. And if I recycle that, um, there's just no LEDs at all. And it's not just a brightness daylight thing. He's dead, Jim. Is this a dead man, Doctor? Very dead, Mr. Spock. He's dead, Jim. Dead, Captain. There you go, that's pretty easy to get out from the uh, DIN rail mount and uh, it's nice that they've got the Phoenix uh, contact blocks on there so I didn't have to unscrew anything and have uh, you know wires flapping around in the breeze. That's really nice. And again I'll just give you a bonus marvel at uh, <laughs> the wire in the rat's nest that is the back of this fuse box. Yeah it'd be a bit better. There's the uh, neutral block down there. And, uh, sorry, that's the earth uh, block and neutral block as well. Yes, uh, you can upgrade these things. And I do believe that if I add anything substantially more to the house, uh, then it is a automatic, uh, like, this would not meet current standard and you have to get it redone. And I think they just redo it as one big box here. Of course, all the uh, DIN rail stuff, that they'd all go um, in the one uh, you know, just the one huge box like that. So all the uh, DIN rail. There's my old uh, kilowatt hour meter there. Like that would be uh, that would be removed. This is the ripple control line receiver for the uh, off-peak hot water system, which we don't use. Anyway, I'm going to take my solar analytics back to the lab and crack her open. Now, unfortunately, it looks like these things are not designed to come apart. Um, there's a split right down the middle. So, I don't know, do I have to take that off? Might, it's probably like plastic clips. Well, not having much luck so far, but listen to this. There's something loosey-goosey in there. Um, yeah, that's not good. I'm trying to get some spudger tools in there and I, I don't know, it's, oh, there we go. Oh, look, look, oh my God. <laughs> well, there's your problem. There's what rattled. That is a diode, is it not? A <laughs> surface mount part just fell. <laughs> Come on, seriously? 
I can, yeah, well, there's your problem. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had that happen. Like a surface mount component just falls out. Okay, I got it. It's starting to crack in the plastic clips, but you have to know where they are to get it apart. Well, there it is. We're in, and uh, there you go. That's really interesting, isn't it? There's our... Oh, I've got some four big electrolytics here. They all look hunky-dory. Gonna have to unscrew that. There's the SIM card, because this is a uh, 3G, I think it's 3G. Yay. Is that an Ernie Bernie mark? Yep, there we go. No whackers. And, oh, there we go. That's got a decent amount on it, doesn't it? Oh, there's a USB in there as well. Programming, doing whatever. Like a little um, PCI kind of uh, card edge connector. That's really quite nice. I was wondering how they were gonna do this in here, because, you know, it's quite a significant amount of stuff in here. This is, you know, got to do three phase measurement. What's a centurion? This is all just interface over here. Where is our cap vanished from? Yeah, there it is. Ah, gee, ah, ah, yeah, zappy, zappy. Um, I just got zapped. I just got zapped. That cap was charged. Oh, oh, yeah. That was a, <laughs> that was a good one. That was the DC side of that. That was charged up. Ouch. <laughs> oh, goodness. Anyway. <laughs> I should have thought about that. But what? There's no bleed resistor on there um, for the caps? Oh, of course, these things aren't designed to be serviced, but geez. Okay. Still shaking my hand on that one. <laughs> Thumbs a bit tingly. Didn't give it a thought, actually. But yeah, with hindsight, um, yep, I should have known that they were uh, DC... Uh, input caps charged to mains potential and yeah zappy so <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna get the meter and probe that oh geez I'm still feeling that in the thumb unbelievable there you go trap for young players there's the cap there you go yeah 271 volts so I can discharge that I'll have to get another meter because this one doesn't have the uh, low Z Look what just happened to be lying around the ultra rare EV Vlog Triple Five multimeter. Um, no, you can't buy it. <laughs> well, actually, technically, you can. Um, go to Kane Test, and you can actually buy this. Not the EV Vlog Triple Five brandy, but anyway. There we go. We've discharged that sucker. And where's the other one? That's discharged. That there will be some recovery on that. Yeah, you can see it. See the voltage recover. But uh, that is now safely discharged. But yeah, wow, that held that for quite some time, didn't it? Let that be a lesson to you. Obviously, I came a guts of there. They've got super caps on the output here. Look, uh, 2.7 volt, 5 farad, 4, uh, you know, brown out. The mains fails, um, and that would keep it going. I don't know for how long, you know, you'd have to do your measurements or whatnot. On here, any other magic smoke escaped? The other diodes look okay. The caps look all right. Yeah, I can't read that on the camcorder screen, but that does look like an R in there. So I think a resistor's come a gutsa. Where the diode is missing from, there it is. And the uh, this is the secondary side. This is secondary side, okay? This is the primary side, 240 volts in, okay? There's our switching transformer. And the secondary side here, the diode there has come completely off. The only reason it would do that is like, if it's melted, if it's heated up so much, that's where it's come from. That whole secondary side is gone ski. And that looks like a probably a fusible input resistor there. Let's let's check that. Because obviously we've had a gross overload on the secondary. They are 10 ohms. So that's that's actually intact. Now if I probe the input, there you go. Yeah, there's definitely all, all three phases are, well, that one's different. But yeah, all three phases there are at least got some sort of connection. Yeah, it is definitely heated up. I like, did we have like a short in the diode or something? Because that discoloration in the PCB is all, it's, it's where it's all burnt. Let's have a look at the main processor board first. Let's just have a squiz. I see a solder bodge, got a little bridge in there. Um, uh, granted, mine is like, a, I think mine is like one of the earlier units. So take that in mind. It's probably very refined now. Lots of uh, flux residue still on the header and stuff. What is, uh, yeah, that, that's the, oh no, that's pin header. Where does that go off? Uh, that's probably a production, production test headers, I would say. Oh, geez, look at that. Is that flux residue on the edge, card edge connector down there? Geez, that's not pretty, is it? Ugh. 
That's like, has that happened after? Why would you have flux residue like that on the card edge connector? That's weird. I, I'm not going to go into any reverse engineering. That looks, is that just an op ampy? That's a microchip part down there. The three pins tied together. Are they the address lines, some sort of addressable memory. Anyway, that looks like the ADC down in there. AD, I think if you look that up, ADE7880. So that's all the bottom of it. Don't know a reverse engineer this thing. As I said, there is a USB interface. That's the antenna connector there. And if you flip it over, it's a Centurion EHS6. So that's an all-in-one module. I guess it does uh, 3G as well, because there's nothing else on here. So that'll have like a little ARM processory thing or something. And it'll be one of those, you know, all-in-one uh, Wi-Fi my, uh, no, this is not Wi-Fi. Um, so yeah, like all-in-one modules. Uh, JK Consulting did this, did they? September 2015. Um, I reckon that resistor, it is. It's completely cracked in half. Look at that. Wow. It's completely cracked in half and moved and resoldered itself in the like opposite direction. Because like the look, the, the numbers are on the front, the top here. So it's like it's it's split. It's heated up so much that it's split. Why would it rotate like that? Has anyone ever seen a part rotate, crack and rotate around like that? That seems incredible. My, my, my thumb still hurts, by the way. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I've felt that zap a couple of times before, but wow. Like it was like I, I put my thumb on it, I think. I have to rewatch the video, and so it, it the path was just inside my thumb. There was no other, you know, it wasn't like going through my body to ground or anything, but my, my thumb's still paying the price, let me tell you. So that resistor there, one five something, has <laughs> completely, uh, it, it hasn't charred, it's just heated up the resistor because it hasn't, like there's just gunk under it, but that that's not the, I don't think that's the PCB material that's actually charred. But what has actually charred is the PCB down in there. And this is where the diode came out. There it is. Poor little on semi jobby. It's complete. D, it was that DE4 or something, was it? But yeah, it's, it's just completely desoldered itself. What watches? <laughs> JK Consulting obviously uh, designed this. So JK done this design, which actually looks, you know, quite decent. I really like the design of it um, and how they fitted it in a standard, the standard uh, DIN rail uh, casing. It's really good. So quite happy with the design, but yeah, why is it, why is it Kamigatsu like that? And for all you MELF fanboys, oh, I'm one of them. Look at this, I love a good MELF. Look at this, look at this, beautiful. That's obviously the input uh, divider because this is, does uh, three phase measurement. So there obviously we've got three pairs there. This this looks like a, you know, a, a good quality bill. What, what brand caps are these, by the way? Yep, they're genuine Matsushitas. And contrary to their name, they're actually good capacitors. They're good Japanese capacitors. So no, no, no worries there. Nescap, haven't heard of them, but they're the, uh, they're the big uh, 10 farads total of uh, super caps on there. 2.7 volts. So, oh, they must, uh, they must be in series. Because <laughs> nothing's going to be operating at less than 2.7. Probably just a 3.3 volt rail. And they've got, or could even be five. Yeah, no, it has been in service for six plus years. I'll have to get the exact date of the video. So I just paid for a new five-year plan on this thing. You, you know, you pay for the data plan. Because it, it has to talk, you know, um, to the thing. It isn't much. It doesn't actually cost a huge amount. Have you ever seen one? Like that, because that's a that's a Bobby Dazzler. Can we have a minute's silence for that poor resistor? <laughs> that that is not sold a dag. It was not. This would have been nicely reflowed, um, soldered at the time. And yeah, nah, it's just it's melted. And when you heat up components enough, yeah, they melt solder joints. And components like this diode literally fall off. It's not uncommon, especially if it's in the right orientation for it to fall off and gravity does its thing. Now, my first thought about the failure mode of this thing was that the diode went short because that is a failure mode uh, for diode. Well, it went low resistance and then it, you know, it had heated up internally and then that uh, caused because there's no fusing on the output. It doesn't seem to be any fusing on the output there. They've got a series resistor here, but I think that's for, is that for charging this and that's for 
charging the super caps, is it? But anyway, um, yeah, so it was drawing all the power <laughs> that, that the primary could give it uh, via this uh, very nice looking uh, worth uh, transformer here and uh, yeah it was given it <laughs> it was given all it could and this poor resistor which is on the primary side um, it was it was pulling all the power from the primary side and it just couldn't handle it um, so this poor resistor's come a guts uh, it's not like the resistor uh, failed it failed because it was drawing too much uh, the secondary was causing too much power but what caused the diode uh, to fail if you look and you gotta remember we've got all this gunk down here Okay, <laughs> where did this come from? It's accumulated in the connector. Uh-huh, have a look down in there. That super cap looks like it's come a gutsa. Check it out. It's spewed its guts. I think that's spewed its guts everywhere. And yet, yeah, hence why the PCB looks like filthy. And why, look, I mean, why do we have this gunk under the resistor here? What is this gunk? Okay, that is probably dried electrolyte from the super cap but I still I, it's not like the electrolyte got under there and it became conductive and that's no I think there's a serious excess overpower event there because that that PCB is it is it actually burnt I mean there is some electrolyte residue under there but yeah it's just the dirty nature of the PCB it seems to have like gunk like everywhere on it it's like, yeah, I don't think it was that, feel, like, you know, it's all around here as well. And if you look at the physical location, okay, and uh, where gravity is taking this thing, but interestingly, if you see how it's mounted like this, then it makes sense if, like, it was physically mounted like this, the leads were over this side, so if this cap, super cap, leaks, then it's all going to fall down like that in that direction and yeah it will accumulate in the connector and I can't see how it can actually get up into like you know like climb up into here and because that's against it's, it's physically this board's physically vertical like that um it looks like that's leaked I'm going to desolder that and we'll have a look at the bottom of it but I did test these caps before and they did actually seem to charge up with my um ohmmeter so you know like very incredibly slowly they both seem to charge up though okay yeah, yeah, look at that. Yeah, I reckon she's she spewed her guts. That's uh, the only reason that would happen to the bottom of that and that yellow ring all around it. Yeah, yep. I think this is the uh, this is the cause. Super cap failed, spewed its guts, and then it did whatever. And then the failure mode after that, it doesn't. It it, it almost doesn't matter, does it? And you can see on the PCB down here, that's electrolyte. Yep, wet. Gotcha. That's wet electrolyte. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> it's gone down. Okay. Wicked into the connector like that. And yep. Yep. It's all still wet. So there you go. Super cap fire. Oh, that, that track there. Is that starting to... Oh, that's starting to go black. I don't... I don't like it. I don't like it. Like, you could fix this. You could repair it. Um, and if that has actually gone conductive under there, you'd have to like probably drill it out so it's not uh, conductive and uh, everything's starting to corrode and it's it's not pretty. If you were desperate, you could actually repair this, but uh, yeah, nah. Anyway, I'll send this video to uh, <laughs> Solar Analytics and see if they've had any other failures of uh, these super caps, uh, nest cap. I don't know. I haven't used them before. Anyone know if they're any good? But uh, yeah, like all the other components in this seem top quality. So yeah, I don't doubt that they're um, top quality caps. They've, they've just failed. Did it get too hot in the Aussie sun? Uh, my fuse box happens to be on the uh, afternoon sun side, so it would actually get hot. Anyway, there you go. Super cap fire. Wow. Wow, it spewed its guts and then that caused a poor diode to completely desolder itself and then this that magnificent resistor that's just snapped. The ceramic base is just snapped in half and then resoldered in the other direction. That's terrific. That is a great failure mode. I love it. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up, especially for <laughs> me zapping myself. Um, yeah, that was Dumb Dave trademark. Uh, yeah, don't make that same mistake. Anyway, give it a big thumbs up. Comments down below. Um, I'll let, let you know what um, Solar Analytics uh, say, and I guess I'm without a monitoring system, although 
I've got like three other monitoring systems. So, you know, but this one is like the combined one. But anyway, see what they have to say and uh, I'll get back to you. Maybe if they're the second channel videos for something like that for the follow-up. Catch you next time.